cares mentality, and yeah. I think that they don't give fans enough credit. So I'm so happy to hear that that's what you guys did in the room. Um, so how many years beforehand again uh, does this take place from the original movie? From we are the past? We, you know uh, it's interesting. Trying are not specifically years, okay. so uh, we're we're keeping that. We're not we know what it is, but okay. we're keeping it a little fluid because there's stuff that happens in the second series that uh, you know that 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 uh, it might have something to do with the time okay. at which it happens. So, you know, it, to not spoil That's right. uh, a potential second season, okay. if everybody who's listening to this shows up and starts watching it on Netflix, please, please, do that. please watch it. When, yeah, so when you're talking about all that mythology building mm-hmm. that you're doing in the writer's room and you're talking about season two and hoping mm-hmm. it's happening. Yep. A theoretical you, season two. Theoretically. Are you looking forward to season three, possibly a sequel mm-hmm. after The Dark Crystal? Well, it's interesting. One of the things that um, Jeff and Will did when they pitched this thing, you know, I was I was basically brought in after they had gotten the green light on the show, and the reason they brought me in was because Jeff and Will, they're brilliant writers, but they hadn't really worked in television before and had a writer's room, so I was brought in to be that kind of seasoned... <laughs> Yeah, which is hilarious. Uh, experienced, uh, yeah, exactly. And and we became such close friends and close collaborators. We really, sort of became a hydra uh, in terms of the writing of the show with the rest of the writing staff. So, um, one of the things that I loved about what Will and Jeff proposed originally, what got them the job, and what stayed in the presentation of this all through development, was they have an answer. Mm. You know, there is there's a word that I'm not supposed to say in press for the show, and that word is genocide. Because mm. um, <laughs> right. a very depressing word. And you might see the movie and think, oh, this is this is a movie about uh, the aftermath of that yeah. word we don't talk yeah. about, you know. And it could and it could be uh, interpreted as very depressing. And one of the things that Jeff and Will have done is they've constructed an answer that gives us a very satisfying second chapter for this. And, and when we came in to look at the first season, one of the first things we did was cut this, cut that their pitch for the first season in half, mm. because we realized there's way too much narrative density in the first half of this, and the second half deserves its own its own space. And the second half comprises sort of their response to that concern. You know, what, what we're allowed to say is Thra is a very big place, mm-hmm. yeah. and there's a lot of room for hope. Um, and there's a lot of ways that a victory can be a victory without appearing to be one. So don't watch the movie and make too many assumptions. Right. Got it. Uh, I'm, kind of, about, you know. I'm a little surprised that you guys have not been confirmed for a second season yet. Me too. Gosh darn it. So yeah. y- you thought you would hear by this point? You know, um, here's the thing. This show is this show is a huge uh, – risk is not the right word, but it's Undertaking? Kind of a, yeah, it's a huge lark. You know, like literally we're doing 10 hours yeah. of, a, of a show with the narrative density of Game of Thrones entirely with puppets. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know? so and it's set in another planet that was invaded by people from yet another planet and they split the magic crystal. I mean, literally, the, the, you know, I'm getting I'm getting uh, mean tweets from people because there's stuff we left out of the introduction that is canon. And we're like, no, it's still canon, but we had to simplify, guys. So, I thought you did a great job oh, with that. Thank you. <laughs> you explained it very quickly well, and simply. Uh, one as my, much as you can. Yeah, one of my favorite stories is 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 we were trying to figure out who's going to narrate that, and Louis just sort of and Louis French and I can't do his accent, but Louis says, "Well, you know, uh, I can get my uh, I can get my uh, my godmother to do this." And we're like, "Oh, who's your godmother?" And he goes, oh, "It's Sigourney Weaver." And we're yeah. like, "Yeah, please yeah. <laughs> get your godmother to do this. That's fantastic." Uh, so anyway, um, so so uh, the show is is expensive, um, although not as expensive as many other Netflix shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's a show that you know uh, the audience. I think uh, I don't know what the ratings are. They haven't really disclosed those to us. They never do. Yeah, no. but but I think at this price point and this level of ambition, they do have to look at their metrics a little more closely. You know, because it's not like something like Santa Clarita Died, which is a really fun show and a great show. Oh, so good. But you know, it's a show that is you know a little less cumbersome to produce. You know, I mean, this show took. Well, they canceled it anyway. Well, yeah, they did, and s- same with No Good Nick, which is a wonderful show, mm-hmm. and everybody should watch it. Uh, you know, so, so sometimes those demographics questions. I don't know what their algorithm is, but for us, it's also like it just took a really long time to make the show, you know, yeah. a lot of money. And that's a decision you can't enter into lightly. The other thing is, um, in apropos of your question, Netflix uh, is starting to sort of look at these things not as seasons, but as events. Yeah. You know, so Age of Resistance has a really nice sort of end that has a, it ends on a cliffhanger, if you know what happens in the movie, but it also has a shape and an end, and it's very satisfying on its own. You can watch it without seeing the movie. You can, you know, you can enjoy it on its own. Um, you know, so a second season you know, it, 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 to them it's less important kind of, you know, how long it takes to make and all that than, than they have something that's really solid and wonderful and that they can really p- 
play as an event, yeah. you know. Would well, season two also be Age of Resistance? I am not at liberty to discuss the uh, subtitle of the second that's season fair. in any yeah. way whatsoever. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Well, this is why. Uh, I'm sorry, we like no, a huge okay. NDA. So <laughs> this no, is on, this is on you guys now. Hello, okay. because you guys now are uh, <laughs> yes, please. Look, if you have not watched this show, and I know that people who are watching this particular show, you're fantasy buffs, and I know that you like to watch shows like this. And I think that that's what maybe a lot of people also when they turn it on, they say, oh, maybe this is for my kids, and mm-hmm. it's not necessarily. Oh, no, oh God, no, I wouldn't show this to kids. It's terrifying. Right. 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 Yeah. right. <laughs> we had we had a, we had a card in the writers' room that said no childhood left on Scar. Yeah, and then there was another one that said it sure it sure as something ain't the happy crystal. Right. So yeah. <laughs> so and and I think that sometimes you know we say ah oh, this pop it's gonna be, I'm telling you just from watching what the dark crystal was it is one of the, a movie that is near and dear to my heart I can't wait to dive back into the, the series mm-hmm. I started it and I'm really oh, loving what I've seen so far. Cool.